Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. In today's video, we're going to make a loom knit purse. So I will leave everything you need in the description box below. We're gonna start with the drawstring cast on. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a slip knot and I'm not gonna make it too tight and I'm just gonna place it on that anchor peg and then tighten the knot a little, but again, not too much. So again, we're gonna do the drawstring cast on, so go behind the first peg, in front of the next peg, behind the peg, in front of, you'll just continue this the entire way around the loom, going behind the peg and in front of. You're wrapping your working yarn around the peg and then back of the peg. For this project I am using double stranded yarn and that's just pulling the yarn strings out from in the middle and on the outside of the skein. So we're making our way around the loom And again, you just continue this pattern of going behind the peg and in front of the peg. Okay, so we're going to go behind this next peg here. Then we're going to go in front of the peg. And now we're going to start wrapping. So we're gonna take our working yarn and wrap it in front of the peg. Now we're only gonna do a few strands at a time because doing more than that usually is difficult. So as you can see, I have my working yarn in front of my peg. So I'm going to knit over that peg. And now here is another one. Now we'll take that working yarn and wrap a few more pegs. And here we have two, and you just knit over the ones with two strands. Just do this a little bit at a time. There's no need to do a large area at once. A little tip is to make sure that you have your yarn and it's not tangled. Make sure it's ready to go and pull it out but not tangled because that can get you held up. So um, just continue doing this and I am going to show you the entire way around the loom how I'm doing this as you go. As you can see my yarn is a little tangled here at the right hand side uh, so I will be fixing that um, in order to move on. That was actually inside of my skein uh, tangled like that. So um, just, just a little tip, make sure it's all straightened out if you can, do the best you can. So here we're still knitting over the pegs with two strands in front. Hopefully you get a good look at what I'm doing here, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. But again, it's easy to do this, um, just going slow and doing little parts of the loom at a time. Even if you have a 24 peg loom. We are almost to the end. And I will show you the next step after we get to our anchor peg. So we have this peg to knit over and this peg. So now we're going to do the figure eight stitch. So we are going to skip that first peg, wrap in front of the next peg, 
behind and now we have these two to knit off. This is only going to be for the first part of wrapping this way that we're skipping that first peg. So if you're asking yourself why did she skip that first peg? It's just how the pattern goes because of the drawstring cast on. So don't worry about it. Just move on to the next. So skip the peg, go behind it and wrap around and then knit over. So our working yarn is right here. So we're going to skip the next peg, go in front of the peg next to that, wrap around and knit over. We're going to work our way around the loom doing this process. And again, it's just skipping that first peg from where the working yarn is, going behind, wrapping it around, and knitting off. So I'm going to go around the loom and show you exactly what I'm doing and I'm going to go slow. There may be times when I'm not talking. This brings me to my question that you can leave in the comments. When I'm working and it goes silent, do you prefer music or do you prefer silence? Leave me a comment and let me know when I'm working and the sound goes down, do you prefer music? or do you prefer it just to be quiet? So since I've gone over this stitch, I'm going to put it a little bit faster so we can get around the loom a little bit faster and move on with our next step. We're actually going to do 10 rows of the figure 8 stitch. So again, we're going to do this 10 times. So 10 times around, 10 rows of the figure 8 stitch. And then we're going to do a different stitch after that. So I will meet you back here once you've done your 10 stitches or your 10 rows of the figure 8 stitch. Okay, we've done our 10 rows of the figure eight stitch. Now we're going to do one full row of the purl stitch. So again, we've done our 10 rows of the figure eight stitch and now we're going to do one row of the purl stitch. Now the purl stitch is reaching down below for your working yarn. 
and pulling the yarn off of the peg and then pulling it tight. So again, we're gonna take our hook, pull that working yarn, make a loop. See, there's the loop. Then we're going to take the yarn off the peg and put the loop back onto the yarn and tighten. So I'm gonna put it in slow motion so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So if you're a beginner, hopefully this will help. So take your hook, reach for that working yarn, pull the loop out. See, there's the loop. Now we're gonna take that off of the peg and place the loop back onto the peg and tighten. If you're having problems grasping the technique of the purl stitch, don't worry, just keep practicing, it's normal. It happened to me when I first started knitting. I didn't think I would ever understand the purl stitch at first. So we're just going to continue the entire way around with one row of the purl stitch. Okay, we're finishing up the purl stitch. Just a few more and we'll be done with the purl stitch. Okay, this is our last one. Now we're gonna start back on the figure eight stitch. So we're gonna skip that first peg, wrap around the next peg, and then wrap around this peg that you skipped, and then knit over. So we'll take our working yarn, skip the next peg, wrap around the peg next to that, and knit over. We're actually going to do the figure eight stitch for 15 more rows. So again, we're going to do the figure eight stitch in blue for 15 more rows. Okay, I've done my 15 rows. Now we're gonna take the drawstring cast on that we did and we're gonna close the hole on the bottom. Now right now, I'm not gonna sew it up. I just wanted to show you how it looks once you close it up. And just give that middle string a cut so it's not in your way. So we did our 15 rows and now we are going to switch our color to white. 
So I'm going to go ahead and switch my yarn to white. Now I have my yarn secure and I'm going to continue doing the figure eight stitch with this white yarn. So I'm going to do it the same exact way. I am using a chunkier white yarn so that is the reason why I do not have two strands like I do with the blue. Um, again it is a chunkier white yarn so I don't need to double my strands. So we're going to do six rows of the figure eight stitch in the white. So just continue this process for six rows. The stitching is identical to how you stitched your figure eight with the blue yarn. Now we're starting the basic bind off so we're going to wrap the first peg and knit over. We're going to work to the left, wrap the second peg and knit that one over. Take that stitch off of the peg and move it to the right and then you'll knit over that peg. Take that stitch off the peg and move it back over to the left. And then tighten your yarn. Now we're going to wrap the next peg and knit over. Take that stitch off, move it to the right, pull, then knit over. Then we'll remove that stitch and place it to the left. So we're going to knit over, take your stitch off and move it to the right, knit that one over, take the stitch off of the peg and move it to the left. So we're going to keep doing this the whole way around the loom. This is called the basic bind off. If you don't like this bind off, you could also do the stretchy bind off, which is another option for this purse. So again, I'm going to just follow the way around the loom and, and do my bind off so you can see everything I'm doing. And if you have any questions, leave them below. Uh, but I would like for you to see what I'm doing and hopefully that helps any beginners or anyone that's having trouble with the bind off. Something else I wanted to mention is that you don't have to use two colors of yarn. That is optional. So if you just want to go with one color, that's fine. I chose to use two colors to, I like the way they it looked together. So um, again, you don't have to change colors. You can use one color of yarn for this, and that's totally fine. Okay. 
My choice of yarn for this video is Red Heart Super Saver. The white is chunky, and then I also used two strands of the blue to make it a little chunkier.
We're getting down to the end. Almost done with our basic bind off. Okay, so we'll wrap that over, move that stitch to the right, and then knit over. And now we're ready to tie off the purse. So take your purse off of the loom, make that loop a little bit larger because we're going to place the yarn, the working yarn. I'm going to give it a cut. And then I'm going to place that tail through the loop and tighten. So I'm just going to tighten that up. And now we have a few more things to do, but we are almost done. We're also going to hide these tails in. We still need to sew the bottom. Now we're going to hide the tail in at the top of the purse. So again, I just threaded my darning needle and now I'm going to just hide this in. Now we're going to sew the straps onto the purse. And we make the strap of the purse by making an I-cord separately. And you can use your loom to make an I-cord or they have what's called French knitters that you can make I-cords. I'm going to show you how you can make your own I-cord with the loom in this video. But for now, I'm just going to sew these straps right on here. Now you can also make a thicker I-cord. And I'll explain how to do that. But we just thread our needle and sew on where you want the, where you want the actual straps.
So now I'm just going to hide this tail in as well. And it's just real easy to do. Just find a little spot. It's really thick in the corner where you sewed that on and just hide it in. And once it's knotted, it'll be fine. Just secure it and cut it. Cut that tail. Do the same exact thing for the other side of your purse with the strap. As promised, I'm going to show you how to make an I-cord on the loom. So we're going to start by making a slip knot. We're going to place it on the loom and wrap three pegs. Then we're going to take the working yarn in front and knit over those three pegs. Push that down and tug on the tail a little to tighten it. Now take your working yarn on the back and wrap it around the front and then knit over again. So let me show you. Here's your working yarn. You're going to place it around the back and then wrap it around the front and then knit over. So there it is in the back wrap it around those three pegs and wrap it in the front and knit over. So you just repeat these steps and that is what will make your eye cord. Continue doing this until you get the length of the eye cord that you need. And then I will show you how to take your I-cord off your loom. This is how it looks from the back. Okay, so I've made my I-cord and now I want to take it off the loom. So let me show you how to do that. Start at the left, take that stitch off of the peg and put it on the peg in the middle. It's probably easier if you use your fingers. Now take the stitch and knit it over. Then take the stitch on the right, place it on the middle peg, and then knit over. Pull on your I-cord. And then just remove the I-cord off of the loom. And we'll cut our working yarn and you'll want to keep it a little bit lengthy like the first tail because we're going to sew this in to something. So go ahead and snip your I-cord and then you'll just place that tail through the loop at the end of your I-cord and tighten it. Just make a knot and that's it. Your I-cord is made and you're ready to sew the straps onto your purse. Again, you can make the straps as long or as short as you'd like. It's up to you, personal preference. And that's going to do it for our loom knit purse video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more videos like this. And I just wanted to explain a few modifications in this video. You can make a bigger eye cord. If you use more pegs, you could possibly do four pegs instead of three. And you can also make a flower for your purse if you'd like. And something different that I've done is made a single crochet border at the top. And if you're interested in knowing how to make a single crochet border for one of your projects, leave me a comment below and I can do a video on that as well. So again, thank you for watching and I will see you at the next video. Bye!